Good morning scholars, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're going to be looking at writing fractions as decimals at the grade 4 level. We are looking at fractions that have powers of 10 in the denominator. So that's what we're focusing on this morning. So whether it's 10, 100, 1000, these are the fractions we're focusing on. Because there's a pretty straightforward and simple way to change these fractions to decimals. Once you have a power of 10 in the denominator, you simply look to see how many zeros are in the power of 10, and if it is one zero, you're going to move one place to the left in the numerator. So you're going to move from the end to the left in the numerator. If it's 100 you're dividing by, so if it's 100 in the denominator, you're going to move two places to the left in the numerator. You're going to move that imaginary decimal point from the end of the whole number to the left. If you're dividing by a thousand, so if it's a thousand in the, in the denominator, you're going to move three places to the left. So we're focusing on the powers of 10. And... Um, so everything in this column has 10 in the denominator, everything in this column has 100, everything in this column has 1,000. Alright, so we're going to go ahead now and change. So remember, all we're doing, if 10 is in the denominator, we're going to move one place back, one place to the left. So that means we're going to move from here that way. So that means the decimal point would be no in front of the 2. So we're dividing by 10. We're no longer going to have the 10 because all we're going to have is the decimal. And we just fill a 0 in the whole number place to show that there is no whole number. It's just a fraction. It's just a decimal. Okay. So 9 tenths. 9 tenths. So we're going to do the same thing. Move one place to the left. The decimal point is now going to be right here in front of the 9. If you just had point 9, that would be fine. But most times when there is no whole number and there is a decimal aspect to it, we put a 0 to fill the space of the whole number. Just to indicate that there is actually no whole number. It is just a decimal fraction. 39 tenths, right? So in this form, this is actually an improper fraction, which means we're going to end up with a whole number and a fractional part, a decimal part. So when we move, since, we, since 10 is in the denominator, we're moving one place back, one place to the left. That means we're only going, the, the, the one place will take us here in between the 3 and the 9. So that means our answer is going to be 3.9. See that? 3.9. So 39 tenths is the same as 3.9. How about 14 tenths? Again, we're dividing by 10. We're moving one place to the left from the end of the whole number. One place to the left. That means it's going to take us at... 1.4 in between the 1 and the 4. So that's 1.4. 253 tenths. 253 tenths. We're only going to be moving one place to the left. One place from the end to the left. So that's, it's going to take us in between the 5 and the 3. So that's going to be 25.3, 25.3, 418 tenths. Again, one place back, since 10 is the denominator, we're, only, we're dividing by 10, we're moving one place back. So from here, it's going to take us in between the 1 and the 8, so that's 41 points. Eight. Okay, 41.8. 
So 418 tenths is the same as saying 41.8 or 41 and 8 tenths. Okay. 25 and 3 tenths, 253 tenths, 25 and 3, that means we can take out 25 whole groups of tens and 3 remain. We cannot get a full 10 because it's just 3, so 3 out of the 10 remain. Okay. So sometimes when we're dividing fractions, we end up with decimal decimals that there's a whole number aspect to it and the actual decimal part of it so now we're dividing by the hundreds we have 100 in the denominator so that means we're going to be moving two places to the left here we just have five so if we're moving two places to the left that means we're going to need our placeholder, our universal placeholder in mathematics, the zero, to hold the place because we'd have to move two places and that means there's a place here we need to hold. So we're going to fill a zero there and of course we're going to put another zero to indicate that there is no whole number aspect to it. It's just a decimal aspect. 1600, 1600, we're dividing by 100, we're moving two places to the left, so that's 1, 2 is going to take us right in front of the 1, which means we are also going to need our placeholder to the left, just to indicate that there is no whole number there. Okay. Remember, Zero is actually a whole number, but when I say there is no whole number, there are meaning no whole number bigger than zero, right? No one, two, three, and so on. So bear in mind, zero is a whole number. So it's incorrect to say there is no whole number there. Zero is a whole number, but there is nothing bigger than zero. So we're just holding that space. 173 hundred. So we have 100 in the denominator, we're dividing by 100, we're going to move two places to the left. So that's one, two places to the left will take us in between the one and the seven. So that's one, seven, three. One point seven, three. One whole, so what this means is we have we can take out one big group of 100 out of the 173. We can take one big group of 100 and 73 are left back because 73 don't reach up to the full 100 yet. So it's 73 hundreds are left back. 73 out of that group of 100. When we make it up to more, we add um, 27 more to it. We'll end up with another full group of 100, and we can have two whole, two whole. All right, so 800, we're dividing by 100, we're moving two places to the left, so that's going to be 1, 2, okay? So we're going to need a placeholder to fill this place right here. Because it's two places we moved back, and we're going to put our decimal point and zero to hold that space in the whole number. 52 hundredths. 52 hundredths, two places back, would take us one, two, that would take us right here in front of the five, to the left of the five. Fill our whole number spot there with a zero. One hundred, just one out of the hundred. We, have, we, we, are, we are not yet in the whole number because it would take one hundred hundreds to make one whole. Remember, one whole can be expressed as any number over itself. So to get one whole, we would have to have at least a hundred hundreds and that would be one whole. So 
100 is not going to cut it. So what this means, so two places back would take us there. Just one part out of 100 parts. 100. 614 hundreds. We can take six big groups of hundred out of this. And 14 hundreds will be left. See, if you move two places back, it's going to go between the 6 and the 1. That means we can get 6 full groups of 100 and 14 hundreds remain. We're going to need to build that up, add more to it. Add 84 hundreds more to this. 86 hundreds more to this to make it up to one whole. Okay, so let's do the thousands. So for the thousands, we're going to be moving how many places back then? How many places to the left? Three places to the left, since it's three zeros. The zeros, you can use that as a shortcut to indicate how many places back you're to move when you're dividing by a power of 10. Whether it's 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million. Count how many zeros there are and use that as an indicator of how many places to the left you are going to move your decimal point. So if you are dividing by 10, 10 has one zero, you move one place to the left. You are dividing by 100, 100 has two zeros, you move two places to the left. Likewise, when it's a thousand in the denominator, we're dividing by a thousand, one thousand has three zeros, we are going to be moving three places to the left from the end of the whole number. So 286 thousands, we're going to move three places, one, two, three, that's going to take us right in front of the two. And of course, we're going to fill in our placeholder to indicate that zero is the whole number here. 25 thousands, three places back, one, two, three, that means we're going to fill a zero in front to indicate that there's nothing in the tenth place. It's 25 thousands. And we fill our place in the whole number with zero. Sixty-three thousands, three places back, one, two, three. We're going to need a placeholder in front of the six, as well as a placeholder in the whole number position. It's just a standard way of writing decimal. If you just have point, whatever, whatever, you aren't, it's not that you're wrong. This is just the standard way of writing decimals when there is no digit higher than zero. In the whole number, we fill that place with zero. It's the elegant way of writing. 197 thousands. So we move back three places. One, two, three. It's going to take us right in front of the one. So that's point. 197 and we're going to fill a zero in the whole number position 36 thousands three places back one two three would force us to put a zero in the tenth place to hold that place as well as a zero in the whole number position. 54 thousands, one, two, three. Again, we need a zero there in the 10th place. And 193 thousands, 193 thousands, moving back three places, one, two, three, that will leave us right in front of the one.
and we hold our whole number position with a zero. So to recap, once we're dealing with powers of 10, and by powers of 10 we mean 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, million, on and on and on. Is we, have a, we have shortcuts that we can use to divide by powers of 10, to change fractions that have denominators of powers of 10. We simply move the decimal point that number of places to the left. Now, if you had worked these using long division or short division, you would see that you end up with the same answers, right? So, after years and years of doing this, remember when we come upon shortcuts in mathematics, or, or we develop formulae in mathematics, this is as a result of decades of trial and error that mathematicians go through, sometimes centuries, sometimes millennia, of working and looking at patterns and discovering that, hey, if we keep doing this, this is the kind of result we get. So after a while you realize you don't have to keep doing this long, drawn out thing, although it's good to do that from time to time to understand the concept, depending on what you're doing, but if you find that this is the pattern, and you always get this result from that pattern, then it saves us time from having to go through the same steps over and over again. So, we have discovered that whenever we divide by a power of 10, the result is the same as just moving the decimal point that number of places to the left. So now we can just go ahead and use that shortcut whenever we're dividing by a power of 10. Just look how many zeros there are in the power of 10. If it's 10, it's one place to the left. 100, two places to the left. 1,000, three places to the left, and so on. And remember, if you move a number of places to the left and you don't have that many digits in the numerator, you're going to need to fill that space, so hold that space, with our universal placeholder, the zero. And if you end up having no other whole number in the whole number position, still write your zero as the whole number, holding that spot. All right, so that's it for writing fractions as decimals, fractions that have powers of 10 in the denominator. If you have been helped by this video, please just comment to say thank you. And do share the video to your friends, your classmates, your relatives, so that they can benefit as well from the information. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you can have access to all the dozens and dozens of videos that we have available. Let me know if there is a particular topic that you'd like me to do a video on, and I'll see you in the next video.